what's up? It's Paul from Guitar World, and today we're going to be talking about the 20th anniversary of John Petrucci and his collaboration with Ernie Ball Music Man Guitars. And then we're going to be talking about his brand new, two new guitars here with Ernie Ball Music Man, which are 20th anniversary models, the 20th anniversary John Petrucci, and then the 20th anniversary Majesty. So let's get to the man who needs no introduction, <laughs> Mr. John Petrucci. Hey, how you Thank doing, Paul? Thank you for Paul? coming. Good to see you it's again. It's nice to to see real life people <laughs> for a change. <laughs> That's right, here we are. Get out of the house. I would have worn my good pants and not the ones with rips on them. I know. That's okay. I mean, <laughs> I've got the fade going, we have the rip, so we're all, we're in good, I'm in good company. So here we are, and I mean, I'm excited over this. I just got these the other night, and it's amazing like to think that you've been as a, an artist collaborating with a musical manufacturer for over 20 years, and uh, I would say that Vi and Clapton have you beat, <laughs> but uh, but you know your longevity with this particular brand yeah. and the evolution of your guitars is you know it's something to be noted. So, I mean that that's mind blowing to me, and it, it's so cool. Um, I can't believe it's been 20 years. I remember, you know, just first talking to Sterling Ball and and you know us meeting and starting this relationship together so long ago. Um, and I remember just having all these ideas for guitar design, things I wanted to do. And now to, to be at this point 20 years later and to look back on everything that we created and, yep. um, you know, just, just all of the incredible instruments that have come out of that partnership, yep. you know, and now celebrating with the 20th models, which are absolutely gorgeous. What's interesting, you know, it's like if you really think about 20 years ago, I mm -hmm. mean, you're probably one of the very early, like, you know, signature artists that maybe not a lot of people maybe who know about outside outside of your fan base. Right. Like, you know, if you think about signature models, you're everyone's thinking about, you know, Slash, Page, right. Clapton, Hendrix. Those those were the things that were kind of out there. And here you are, you know, coming, you know, as is like John Petrucci, you know, he's a shredder and blah blah blah. And, but here he is. Isn't that, it must have been a little bit intimidating in a way to say like, I want to collaborate and make a guitar here. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because I've always been, you know, for most of my career, like the, the guitar player in Dream Theater, that's been mm -hmm. my band for forever. Um, but it was only, you know, I mean, 20 years ago or so sort of coincides when I started to sort of develop a, a solo career or solo identity, you know, mm -hmm. doing G3 for the first time, yeah, coming right. out with a solo album, um, and then getting uh, in more and more into guitar design. So this all sort of coincides with, with that. And uh, I mean, the amazing thing about Ernie Ball Music Man and Sterling Ball and, and his whole family, his sons, mm -hmm. Brian and Scotty, and the entire family, all the incredible um, engineers, you know, it's such an incredible team of people that have been so amazing to work with and to like their commitment to me in the very beginning to always, as Sterling would say, create tools for artists, yep. you know, and be dedicated to the the art form and what the guitar player is trying to convey mm -hmm. and making that into an instrument that, you know, hopefully other people would get to enjoy. I mean, that has not changed over the 20 years. And if anything, it's gotten better and better and better. And we've, we've perfected and, and tweaked and refined everything. But that commitment and that attitude has, has been there from the beginning and it's still there. And, you know, the str when you have that kind of strength in a relationship where there's this artistic, creative yep. understanding, this friendship and everything else, you know, above and beyond that, it's no wonder that 20 years passed like yeah. that, you know? Really well, it neat. makes that collaboration just easier and, yeah. and, and there's a, you know, sort of a, a flow that, just, that, yeah, that, you have, exactly. that you guys have. Yeah. So it's interesting what you said just before, which I, which you said you, when you were excited to start doing your signature instrument, um, that you had a bunch of ideas. Yeah. Now, you know, when you really think about guys who have already have signature instruments out there, they have, they usually build upon a particular platform. And, sure. And it's sort of like, it's, it's not that it's, necessarily unoriginal but it's usually they're just swapping out the pickups right the frets and stuff but you know you as I've, i think i've mentioned before to you like you've 
literally built a, a guitar from the ground up. You, yeah. you had a, a basic idea and then you just kind of tweaked it from there. Like, especially when you, when you look at a guitar like this, this seems to be sort of, you know, so the beginning and then it's evolved from here to there. Right. So, you know, tell me like what, what was the initial idea, sure. you know, when you first started hitting the model. Yeah, and like you said, the, the JP6, the original one was mm -hmm. after many, many prototypes where we landed on the first design, you know, going. And this is a bolt-on guitar. And then eventually um, we came out with the Majesty, which right. is a neck through. So yep. th there's actually tons of similarities and, and crossovers, but there's lots of difference. A lot of differences. The these desires that I have, the needs that I convey, as far as the the physical attributes of of an instrument, I think are very sort of common and typical. I, I find I find this you know all the time. There there's sort of things that most guitar players think about and want and say, oh yeah, like why does that have to be like that? Right. You know, and so. Like my whole thought was not to come up with all these unconventional things. Okay. You know, I'm not. I don't. I'm not like a weird guitar player. I don't think. <laughs> so you didn't want to come be be strange off the bat. You wanted to have a little bit of a marriage of the of what familiar. Well, it's kind of like like the the way that I play. I think is sort of normal. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I don't have like a weird technique or something. I just sort of play traditional and rest my hand here and play like this. So. It's, all, all their initial requests all had to do with ergonomics, mm -hmm. you know, um, just the the um, the neck dimensions. You know, it's like sure. most guitar players, not all, but most like a nice, comfortable neck that's not a big, giant baseball bat. And, you know, most guitar players don't like the controls to get in their way. And yep. So there, these were all decisions that were very early on. Um, you know, moving the, the toggle switch out of the way so your hand didn't knock into it. Making the uh, the bridge and saddle pieces rounded and comfortable so it didn't feel sharp. Right. You know, even even this, this was a brilliant idea. The forearm or con contour. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. Sterling had was, you know, why not make it concave? Because it's like, again, you pick up a guitar and there's like a sharp edge. And yep. if you're playing for hours, you're like, oh, it's digging into my arm. Right. So all these types of things just came from these very practical thoughts right. but when you put it all together um it ends up being something really unique and original yeah and so i love that and it just it checks off all these boxes on you know in guitar design like why does this have to be like this why yeah. can't it be that it's so much more convenient you know there's this switch here why would it be straight up and down when you switch your hand goes this way mm -hmm. You know, it should be angled, just like little things. Small things, right. You know, the knobs, playing live, your hands are sweaty. Oh, you go reach for the knob and you yeah. can't turn. Oh, we'll put little rubber things around it so there's grip. Yeah. And that stuff, that all stayed. Those are really big deals as, as yeah. a player. Right. You know, and, and I think, I mean, like you having that sort of rubberized, you mm -hmm. know, grip, you might be one of the first. I'm, if I'm, I mean, I could be mistaken. I'll have yeah, to, I don't I know. To double, I yeah, I'm the first, that's right. You're the first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because I used to remember, uh, Dimebag, for example, like on yeah. his, he had those normal, like those Gibson speed knobs, uh -huh. but his had, in, were indented almost like, almost like little bullet holes. Oh, interesting. And, and when you felt it, you could feel the grip. Yes. It was like his sort of a crude way of feeling a grip, right. but like you sort of refined that and made it far more, you know, attractive and, and incorporated into the design of your guitar. Yeah, so they're very, like some of these decisions are very tactile, just how it feels on mm -hmm. your hand. You know, I don't know if it, it's, I play guitar a lot, like we all do, right? Yeah. But if you're sitting there for hours, you'll notice like the sharp metal digging into your hand or Absolutely. whatever it is. Well, you would notice your whole bottom of your hand is just yeah, ripped up. Yeah, exactly. It's not... And even the contours on the back, mm -hmm. first of all, the, the 20th anniversary uh, aesthetics are just gorgeous. Yeah, I well, mean, I was going to say yeah. from, your, from your, from your, I was going to say from yeah. my point of view, we'll talk, we'll, we'll definitely dig into that but yes I do love the black and gold just so beautiful hardware and I'm just you know as I'm, I couldn't help but say that as I turned it around <laughs> but just all of the contours and and bevels and stuff yep. like that just it, it helps that feeling that when you pick up the instrument yep. it just feels so good it's like sitting in a car and everything's like yeah the seat's so comfortable and all the controls are in the right spot you don't have to guess or yeah you know that's my whole thing um that coupled with amazing craftsmanship Yep. You know, 
every guitar that they build is a work of art. It's it's spot on. I mean, spot like, on. And, and and even just, like I should say, like receiving those like mm -hmm. the the setup, the action on that yep. was like is incredible. Right out of the box. Right out of the box. Yeah. And then of course sonically, being able to do all the things I want to do, and I've been um, working with. Larry DiMarzio yep. for forever and ever and ever and of course we continued uh, when I started the relationship with Ernie Ball Music Man so all the pickups in these guitars has been my DiMarzio yeah. signature pickups and and so they the guitars end up doing everything yep they feel great they look great they play great they sound great they sound and great. I have no complaints let me ask you on yeah. that just since, since we have this since you since you're holding that out this is the the JP 20th anniversary yeah and of course, this one, I, I love the look of this. I mean, of course, both of the models have that honey butter finish on yeah. it. And this one has the flame, has the flames on top, but without the badge, of course. So mm -hmm. that you have that, but both Honduran mahogany neck and body. And this is a bolt on. Now, the interesting thing is for this particular model, mm -hmm. you, because it's a bolt on, you're using the DiMarzio Crunch Lab and Liquifier. Right. Uh, and, and then the other, Your Majesty, on the other hand, uses what the Rainmaker and Dreamcatcher, right? That's correct. Yeah. Um, so, why did do you hear a, ton, a sonic difference because it's a bolt-on mm -hmm. as opposed to next year? Is that why you kind of voiced it differently? Yeah. So I'll tell you the story behind that. Um, first of all, don't you love the name Honey Butter? Yes, I love. I, I love naming the guitar colors. <laughs> this one, <laughs> that's one of my things. <laughs> it literally, it's such a great thing. I want to, I, I want to incorporate it into some um, drink. Right, <laughs> a honey butter some bourbon. Alcoholic drip. Yes, exactly. I, in fact, I think I did. I might have had bourbon in the name originally, <laughs> but we can get into that we'll, later. We'll talk about that yeah. soon. Yes. I mean, so pickups is that's a whole, a whole different, mm -hmm. you know, uh, place to to uh, to really explore. And obviously the pickups work hand in hand with guitar design and what the guitar is made of and what sure. you're going for. And you know, from from very early on, um, I worked closely with Steve Blucher mm -hmm. at DiMarzio in developing the pickups that would do what I wanted them to do. Yep. And I play a certain style of music and it kind of demands certain things. Yep. Um, it's, you know, whatever you want to call it, prog metal. Um, th there's a lot of soloing Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like sort of heavy rhythm playing and then there's a lot of clean nice things So I need kind of need them to always do that So we've always developed the pickups to try to facilitate all those those sonic fantasies. Yep. All right, so way of um, that. Yeah, you like that. Yeah um, So, you know, they, they've evolved as well mm -hmm. throughout the years and we've always You know as the guitars would evolve We say well, how how can we make them sound even tighter on the low end? So when I'm doing that really tight chunky stuff with the drums and it has to be so syncopated how yes. can we make that not flubby just really tight and when i'm doing a solo on the higher notes we don't want it to like be needles in people's ears we want it to be beautiful and yep. uh, you know and soaring so right. how could we make that smoother on the top end on the higher strings all those different decisions go into it these guitars originally um started out as basswood guitars so mm. the pickups went in that direction there's a bolt you know it's bolt on design yep. And so they respond differently to the way the guitar sure, is created. Sure. Now, as you mentioned, you know, mahogany with a maple top, that's going to have a whole different yep. type of sound, more rich sound, yep. more complex. Yep. A lot more like, sustained. A lot more sustained, yep. you know, a different sort of top end that's a little sweeter. So the pickups help just sort of make the whole package, you know, facilitate. That. But you say you notice there's a, diff a particular sonic uh, character yeah. in these pickups because it's a bolt-on and you have that and that, that combination of yes and the fact that plus you also direct mount them right well. exactly so that actually that's that's something that's really important that we learned early on first of all that the pickups are direct mounted mm -hmm. to the body so they're you know they're gonna get all that sustain yep. now when they started doing the BFR version mm -hmm. um, they were doing like a, a chunk of mahogany in the middle that everything was connected to and we took that as far as we it could go with the majesty because the headstock the neck and this whole middle shield yep. it's all one piece one of piece. wood yeah neck through, right yeah so that's like you get all the sustain yeah. and everything but um you know it's not that you couldn't take these pickups and put them in that guitar yeah. and it would sound great and sure. you could swap or swap them around but in the history of developing yeah. this guitar this is what i landed on as being like the ultimate combination well it's again it's really it's really sort of the progenitor before the ma majesty right. in a way and it, so like when you look at this i find again this is sort of one of the early things you know bolt on neck and straight into 
the pickups, the pickups that 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 suit more of a bolt-on neck guitar. Yeah. And then as you as you started to refine that, you know, as your playing changed, you basically got closer to here. So I would imagine, well, I mean, I've played a Majesty before, but yeah. the Majesty has a lot, a little more. There's a lot more smoothness. Right. It's an articulate guitar. Right. And this, I think, my I would imagine, having not played it yet, but I, it has more of that raw power. Right. Right. I mean, you could. That's definitely a good way of describing it. You could certainly get, you know, let's say I was playing a show, I can go back and forth between the two. And I wouldn't notice and, it. And you know what? It's not that you wouldn't notice it, but they would be equally as fitting. Mm. They might have different characteristics to them. Um, they might even make you play a little bit differently. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they, they're both going to sound incredible. It's just like, you know, different degrees of awesomeness. <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's like, oh, should I play this awesome yeah. guitar or should I play that awesome guitar? Yeah. And they might be a little bit different and that could that could actually be cool in certain situations. In fact, we did uh, the 25th anniversary of Images and Words mm. tour, I think it was. I was playing basswood guitars back then, so I played primarily for that set, the basswood, you know, JPs. That JP, okay. Yeah, just to kind of get bring that sound back. So when the Majesty first came out, the pickups were I believe at that point they were called illuminators or the Marzio illuminators. Yes, that's and a good so point. those pickups were in actually that. the JP 13 or something. Yes. And we ended up putting them in this guitar. Eventually they changed one more time, mm -hmm. but I had the realization one day I was on tour with, with G3. I was in France and I was like, you know what? In all this time when we developed the majesty, mm -hmm. which is a, neck through design yeah we never actually designed a specific pickup for it right it was always right. the pickups from the bolt yeah, on and, right. and exactly. they sound great so of course it sounded great so i said what if we just started like called up steve i'm like what if i sent you a majesty just play it acoustically like what would you do knowing me knowing our history mm -hmm. and so he came up with the pickups that would eventually be the Dreamcatcher and the Rainmaker. Did you name by the pickups, by the way? I named those pickups. <laughs> okay. I was looking at. I was at. <laughs> we we're at Yonder Barn Studios upstate, where we recorded "Distance Over Time." Right, right. And uh, that's where I named them. Looking out the window of the control room. That's great. But he sent me the pickups to to that studio. He's like, try these out. I think he sent two pairs. I plopped them in to one of the Majesties. Plugged it in. I was like. It was like a brand new guitar. It just hmm. sounded like it was jumping out of the, the speakers. Now, were you able to sort of A-B it with the previous model? Yeah. And, and so you just, right away, it was instinctual. It know? was instinctual from the moment I plugged the guitar in. I was like, oh my, it's just bringing out all of the incredible qualities that this instrument has. And, you know, I don't know the mojo we put into it. <laughs> uh, they might be like ever so slightly less output, so maybe they're a little more open. Mm. Um, but they still have tons of power and sustain, lots of, uh, I don't know, character. Yeah. And I even did, you know, we were in the studio, which is perfect. And so I recorded like a track with that and then recorded with the other pickups and went back and forth and you heard it. Mm. You know, so not only was it instinctual, but you can hear it come back to you through the speakers. Wow. And so that's why all the newer Majesties have those new pickups in them. But that's the, the pickup story. That's amazing. Yeah. So tell, let's uh, let's uh, move over to the Majesty. Tell, sure. us, tell us a little bit about the. Now this one, I, I, you know, before you got here, I, and I mentioned, I, yeah, I just I, I caught you playing stop. it when I walked in. He was playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I picked up this guitar. You know, and like, of course, this feels like to me more of a traditional. And I'm sitting on a couch playing this. But you know, the way this rests on you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. I love this this type of guitar. This is the kind of guitar I would, 99% of the time, gravitate towards. And then I pick up you know, your majesty. And then yeah. you, when you look at this, you know, of course, the, the beautiful finish and the flame maple badge on it. And again, the neck through design, but this, the horn here. Yeah. You know, as it, it kind of just rests on you. It so, does. So it actually, it actually fosters like just an easy playability. Well, what you're describing is, is sort of- It's like, it, it is, it's designed just for comfort. And yes. Just to maximize yeah. where you want to be. And you, know? you feel like, the guitar isn't getting in your way at all. Right, exactly. It just kind of becomes an extension of you. Exactly. So so what you're sort of articulating is what I, you know, was going for. Right. Like where this is the ultimate evolution into an instrument that just is the superstar of guitars. It's yeah. just like a race car. Yeah. But it's just really easy 
to play. It's just so friendly. Yeah. So all the things that we learned with the original design, you'll you'll see that. Yeah, I mean, the, look, the layout is yeah, I mean, that's to me, the same. Like you can see how it's right. It's very it's very similar, but then you get to that right. So our layout is the same. Our knobs, our our, yep. our toggle switches, our the bridge design slightly different, but our rounded edges, yep. our double humbuckers, all that stuff, yeah. you know, was Adds like up. proven. Like yeah. that is awesome. We don't need to change it. The neck through is the biggest difference, and the body shape. Yeah. And uh, you know, and Drew, Drew Montel and designing this, you know, we really tried to do something different, something unique. Um, as I said before, Sterling Ball is very involved in that process, has been with me from the beginning. This was another thing he thought of. I'm always worried about like upper access to the higher frets and right. doing these like crazy stretches if if you are, if you opted to do so. Right. And not having the any part of the guitar knock into your hand. Right. But you know, he was like, well, that's great. But what about your thumb? Like, can't that have some fun too? <laughs> like, because it normally would stop right there. Right. So it's like, well, what if we took out the chunk of wood that normally, you know, yep. like there. And that's and so pretty much how the horn, yeah. how that extended horn. So so your thumb goes right up as far as your other fingers. So it's it's actually not that this horn is in a different spot. Right. It's just that there's more wood taken out here. Yeah. So that was such a clever trick we did with that. And uh, they're also super light. Yeah. Oh, it's like so your back isn't hurting at the end of a yeah. three hour show. Um, this has the angled headstock, which is different. Yep. They all have the compensated nut. Um, all these guitars have a preamp built in. Yep. Which is another one of those practical things that we figured out one yep. day where I was playing with long cable runs and the cable was microphonic. I'm like, hmm, how can we get rid of that? We ended up putting a preamp in the guitar with a buffer. Yeah. And you uh, that en enabled us to do a... Um, a boost on yep. the volume. There's like up to 20 dB of boost, so it has its own like boost built in. Coil tap. There's a piezo system on these guitars. Yeah. Stereo output, so you can have a nice acoustic sound. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. when you think about it, like how you've been able to incorporate so many, you know, all these different sounds and all of these different tones in such a streamlined package, right? Yeah. It's just it's very simpler. It's, it's actually very intuitive, you know, between all the switches and. And, and like I'll, I should point out too, which I yeah. also love between the two guitars, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's not totally noticeable outwardly, but if you look, I mean, of course, the recessed knobs are yes. right here, yeah. and then the knobs that are float on top, and of course, the this, this sort of, again, the yeah. switching. That was a on great, the top. yeah, that was, that's one of those really things. Really thoughtful. That, very know? thoughtful. They surprised me with that. Um, I thought that was a really cool design, yeah. you know, to not do the, the rings on the toggle switches and have them be right. recessed. Again, like this becomes again. Yeah. This is definitely far more in the traditional sense. Right. But but when you get to that, you mean you really start to appreciate the artistry that yeah. you know Ernie Ball, Music Man, has done exactly. creating this guitar. I mean, there's so much to it. There's so much to it, and and of, of course the stainless steel frets and the ebony fretboard. Oh, and board. the other very cool thing, yeah. if you flip your of your guitar, yes, is yeah. the 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 laser etched logo. Yeah. But they also incorporated that. The 20th. Uh, right. So we were talking, talking about, about that, that earlier. Right. So the Majesty guitars named after um, the original name of Dream Theater, which was Majesty. Mm -hmm. And our symbol that we use is was an M that yeah. we carried over. And so it's like on everything that we do. So the guitar is called the Majesty. Normally here on the first fret, the first you'd fret. have that Majesty logo. But what they did, which I thought was super creative, is they took the Majesty logo and they incorporated an XX for 20. Yep. So it's like a new, <laughs> right. it's a 20th anniversary Majesty logo. I think that's... But a new symbol that we can all... It's a new symbol to get confused about. No, <laughs> it's, it's super, super clever. Yeah. I, I just love that. I thought that was a great, great touch. In yeah, it's a beautiful, like, like I said, all these small little appointments that they did yeah. for your 20th anniversary with the company is just yeah. fantastic. And I love the flake. I love mm -hmm. that you can see the wood grain all through. You know, like I said, that yeah, that gold flake throughout. Um, just, just beautiful. I just love the the new finish, honey butter. I mean, it just, yeah. ma it makes me hungry. It makes you hungry. <laughs> well, and, uh, you know it's, what? It's a, it's a great, but it actually, it's a great color for this guitar as well. So I love yeah. it. Yeah. And, and it, it's, uh, again, you know, they've had this consistent thing going on. I remember before I was working with them, I picked up a Van Halen model in the store and it's the first time I played a Music Man guitar and I was like, man, this thing is like, so easy to play. It's yeah. a work of art. I'm looking at the finish and the top and and then, you know, fast forward with me 20 years and I pick this up and it's like I have that same 
feeling like they just never you know stopped their pursuit of yeah. like just making beautiful incredibly built instruments well the thing is i think being 20 years with this company yeah basically started this sort of like this uh i guess this hunger for them and into to, to they, they to make really even greater guitars for other artists like like you're one of the first and been there 20 then suddenly suddenly they they pick up saint vincent they also had you know a Val james valentine and yeah. then you also have um you know you got lukather and all these and all the other guys that they that, that they made some really great looking guitars and really advanced looking guitars and you're really the guy who kind of put it all together but also the fact that every you know all these all your guitars have have, have had some bit of refinement to them right that kind of translates to these other guitars as right. well which is really in, which is i find interesting you know what i think is really cool first of all you know you mentioned some of those guys and you know it was a dream for me to join the Henry Bull music man family because steve morris is like my greatest guitar oh, hero yeah. of all yeah, time he's music man and i'm not gonna be this with the same company as steve yes. so steve was there and right. steve lukather was there yeah. and albert lee and yep. i just felt like i was in just I'm not worthy. Like I'm in this incredible company of amazing artists. And then of course, you know, they, they gain new ones as well after me. But um, I think what we, we have been able to do um, is that the guitars have transcended just my name. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, this started out with me just, can't we do this? Why does this have to be there? Can't this be made out of that? Just practical ideas. But I think what we've done is that they appeal now to such a wider range of guitar players outside even of the style that I play. Right. Which I think is, it speaks to the design of the yep. guitar, to the company, to the art, Yep. you know, and, and less about me and more like creating things for people to really enjoy. And I yep. love that. And I love seeing people play jazz and blues and rock and roll and all these different things. And of course, as guys shredding metal and prog. Yep. which is awesome but but you know a great guitar design is a great guitar design and it's like Simple. if you're drawn yeah. to it it doesn't matter what style you yeah. play and i think that really really speaks to to that commitment you know it's yeah. not it's not narrow it's very right. it's very wide a lot of people can enjoy these instruments and have been yeah i love it and i need to i need to uh, settle this argument right away yeah i'm from john petrucci is it is it piezo or piezo i'm gonna say piezo i'm gonna say a little different Mm. I'll say piezo. Oh, there it's been. How's settled. that? It's been settled. I said piezo for the longest time. I think I was corrected at some point. Everyone yells it. Everyone, everyone has. I'm a just gonna. Way. I'm just gonna say it how it's sort of, how it looks. <laughs> well, there it, it goes. We'll it also do. sounds more Italian. It yeah, does sound more Italian. And, I mean, like, <laughs> and there are really graceful lines on that Majesty to make it. You could say it's an Italian sports car. But that's car. right. That's so. right. Also, you know. Again, the carryover, like these sort of bullet markers here, they, yep. they stem from the original shield that's normally right, here. Right, right, right. And we, and we kept those forever. They're on, you know, from the first one all the way yeah. 20 years later. So some of those original design things like just, just really worked. Even the shallower, the locking tuners. I had gone oh, yeah. from guitars right. with a Floyd and a locking nut. Mm -hmm. And when I went to uh, Music Man, um, we did no locking nut. You know, the guitar is going to sound a lot better with just complete sustain, nothing hindering it, but we did locking tuners because the guitars do have a floating whammy bar. So we needed that. So that was a great change as well. And that stayed with us from the- That's awesome. Yeah, for 20 years, these are amazing. So when we see you, when you play out again, you will be rocking these? I will, absolutely. Awesome. I'll be rocking those as well as some of the other, the new 2021 colors that yes. are coming out that are just mind-blowing as well. Well, we'll be talking about more of that stuff, yeah. but I'm going to I'm going to end over here on this one. There's going to be a couple other videos that I'm going to talk about with with John here. And Perfect. so let's let's just say here we are talking about the 20th anniversary John Petrucci models, the JP over here and the Majesty over here and I highly urge you to go check them out. And uh, we'll continue this conversation in a bit. Piezo. Piezo.